Hello everyone, welcome back to the Clara CFO Group channel. Today I have a very special guest for you and I'm gonna introduce her in a second. But the topic today we're gonna to talk about is S corporations. Should you elect to be an S corporation? You may have heard this term before. Electing S corp might have been something that you've heard, or maybe people are talking about it as a way to save on taxes. But if you have ever considered, is this the right step for me? Will it save taxes? You want to watch this interview because we talk about the benefits, um, some things to watch out for, some calculation things. Um, so you can get the right answer. Is electing S corp the best direction that you need? to go. Stay tuned. We're going to get into it in just a second. If you aren't already subscribed to the channel, please make sure you are subscribed. Remember, this channel is helping small business owners with their finances. And so if that is you, you are welcome here. Please go ahead and subscribe and also make sure you put the little notification bell on as well so that you'll know whenever we post a new video. So I'm not going to wait any longer. Let's go ahead and get into the interview with Jamie Troll. All right. Well, Jamie Troll, thank you so much for being here with us today. Hey, Hannah, how are you? It's good to see you. Um, so for the people who don't know you yet, could you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Absolutely. So I'm Jamie Troll. I'm also a CPA. <laughs> I used to be a virtual CFO like Hannah is now, uh, but now I run a fully education-based business for small business owners talking about all things finance. So I'm a financial literacy coach, profit strategist. I have far too many titles, <laughs> but that is what I do now. And I'm a YouTuber just like Hannah. So that's actually how we met, which is an interesting <laughs> story. Yes. And then we found out we had like so much in common and now, now we're friends and it's all good. Yep. And, um, and so like if you are not already subscribed to Jamie's channel, make sure you go and check that out because she's got a lot of great content over there. And something you've been talking about recently is S corps. And so that's mm -hmm. what this video is talking about today. Um, we are going to get into kind of like, what is the buzz around S corps? We're going to talk a little bit about disadvantages, advantages, things to watch out for. Um, if you have seen Jamie before on my channel, it's probably because we were talking about employee retention tax credits mm -hmm. and we had a lot of things to like, you know, watch out for with employee retention tax credits. So we've got your back and um, that's what we want to talk about. So Let's let's kind of start with why are we talking about S corps right now? And really, like this video is going out at the beginning of March, um, and March is kind of like maybe a time that you're seeing information fly at you about S corps. Yeah, S corps stands for S corporations. I have heard that that gets heard differently. <laughs> well, we had a transcription service that kept turning that into escorts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so let's just say that, um, you know, hopefully that doesn't get too much into the algorithm, yeah. but like yeah. S corporations, will put that in the text above so we can say <laughs> that's what we're talking about in this video today. Not um, escorts. That's a whole different video. <laughs> <laughs> Not on these channels. <laughs> so why are we talking about it in March? We are talking about it in March because March 15th is typically the deadline for electing S Corp. Uh, but of course, we have to say, of course, that's the easiest. If you elect by the deadline, that's going to be the easiest route. But if you're watching this after March 15th, don't worry, you can still elect it. Essentially, you just have to provide, you know, some reasoning and a little bit more description of why. And you can kind of just say, oops, I forgot. <laughs> it doesn't have to be, you know, all that involved. But it is easiest if you go ahead and elect by March 15th. And then you can go ahead and start instituting your S Corp. And it'll be, uh, it will be activated as of January 1st of this year, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think when I filled out the paperwork to do it, I think it does say like, what is the effective date mm -hmm. um, that you need to fill out that you would like to do that by? A little bit for people who maybe are unclear on like, why are we even talking about this? So when you first start a business, a lot of us start out as either a sole proprietor, or maybe we've um, set up a basic LLC. Mm -hmm. So a limited liability company. But as we start to grow and we start to make profits, a lot of times we're looking for ways to, to save on taxes. And then there will be people out there who will say, Hey, maybe you should, you know, be taxed as a S corp. And if your tax is an S corp, it's going to save you on taxes. And what we both know is there's always that, but wait, <laughs> but, wait. Uh, but, but wait moment. And so like expand on that a little bit more. 
Yeah, I feel like this is the most, one of the most common questions that I get from business owners is when does it make sense to switch to S Corp, right? Because that is the thing that, I mean, it's really interesting. I have a Facebook group and whenever anybody asks like, how do I save money on taxes? It never fails that there's like 50 answers and of the 50 answers, 40 of them are become an S Corp, <laughs> right? And I'm always in the comments like, okay, but... <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, let's talk about this a little bit because mm -hmm. it's not one size fits all. And in fact, it used to be that you could maybe do a little bit more of a back of the envelope calculation, a rule of thumb cut to kind of figure out when it could make sense. But especially with the passage of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, which happened in 2018, we're not going to get into all the details, but there's a new deduction called the QBI deduction. And it made it way more complicated. So, of course, a bill that was meant to simplify made it way more complicated <laughs> in this specific area. <laughs> and you can't do a back of the envelope anymore. You have to really do a full review to figure out whether it makes sense or not. And there is so much misinformation, either outdated information or just kind of telephone game information out there around S-Corps that that's why I've been talking about it a lot right now because it's on people's minds and they need to have real information, not just kind of, you know, oh yes, this is gonna somehow save me thousands and thousands of dollars in taxes. We wanna understand if that's true and how it actually works in practice. Yeah, and I've been through a couple different situations where I've had clients who've been, had multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars of profit, three, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars in profit and have still, made the decision to not move to S Corp because yeah. of other reasons around um, their whole tax situation. So yeah. it's definitely not a, you know, super quick and easy. And right before we started recording, I mentioned to you, I was flipping through uh, Instagram today and saw this thing that said, you know, as a tax, you know, Instagram influencer uh, was saying like, once you get to 50 or 60,000, you definitely need to, you know, contact us and we'll help you figure out whether or not you should be an S corp. But when, with that, there's some advantages of for the CPA firm or for the tax firm to get you to become an S corp. Um, so maybe tell us a little bit about that. Why would it be incentivizing for a, a CPA firm to do that? And this is one of my issues kind of in this industry, right? Is that I have talked to so many small business owners who have been advised to become an S corp, don't really understand it, don't really know the rules around it, don't even really understand how or why they're saving money. And what they do know is they're saving some nebulous amount of taxes, right? Which is a little difficult to put your finger on, but their accountant says they are. But they're probably, you know, increasing the bill that they're paying to their tax person by quite a bit, right? Because now all of a sudden you have an extra tax filing that you're going to have to do. You uh, are probably putting yourself on payroll at least, which is something you're supposed to do um, as an S Corp owner. And so that's an additional cost. So you may have more compliance, right? You may have more just bookkeeping may, may be more expensive in general now because you have to track your basis, which you didn't necessarily have to do before. So there's just a lot more that comes with it. Now it can still be worth it, mm -hmm. but just know that when you're consulting with an accountant, they may, they may, you know, not all accountants do this, but they may not be fully independent in making that assess assessment. So you want to make sure you're asking, is this actually going to save me money? You know, once we factor in things like this QBI deduction again, right? Make sure they're not doing a back of the envelope. They should be gathering all of the information about your situation to make this assessment, not just saying, hey, you make a hundred thousand dollars, you we're gonna, we're gonna make you an S Corp, right? Make sure they're actually taking into account your specific financial situation and mm -hmm. make sure that they're factoring in the additional cost of compliance so that you're not just going from paying, okay, maybe I'm paying the government less, but all that money is now going to my accountant, right? And is mm -hmm. that really worth it at the mm -hmm. end of the day? So I feel really strongly about kind of doing your own independent assessment and being able to empower yourself to figure that out before needing to walk into accountants an accountant's office and already knowing whether it's a good decision for you or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you've developed like a whole set of tools mm -hmm. to kind of help people with this part of this um, problem, like mm -hmm. where you can potentially spend a little bit of time, spend a little bit of money before you go to a CPA whose billing rates are, you know, 250, 350, $400 an hour for someone to help you figure this out. We like to 
at least know if you need to talk to the CPA at this yes. point in time. So um, we will like give you guys a link to the um, S Corp toolkit that Jamie has put together. And we'll talk a little bit more about what's in that in a little bit. Yeah. But I think independent assessment makes a lot of sense. And, and again, like it kind of comes back to like us being our own advocates as being business owners and having enough education and understanding so that you can understand when people are trying to, you know, pull the wool over your eyes or yeah. trying to, maybe like get you to sign up for something that really isn't the best fit for you mm -hmm. now. And you know, you and I have had conversations about being a little frustrated with the profession in general. Mm -hmm. I'm a CPA, you're a CPA. We love CPAs and we think that they're very, very important. Yes. Um, but sometimes the business motivations of continuing to drive revenue up, up, up can make people you know, have different choices where maybe they're looking to how do we increase re revenue for our firm? Well, what if we took all of our sole proprietors and we, or our LLCs and we turn those into S corps that would, you know, give us an extra thousand to $2,000 per tax return, yep. you know, and we would hope that that's not the sole decision for clients doing this or uh, firms doing that. But it is something to just kind of keep aware of, you know, keep in mind. And I think too, there's a lot, even if they're not doing it from a nefarious perspective, it may also be that they're just misinformed themselves. And so mm -hmm. I think they're even among the profession, you know, if this isn't someone that deals with this all the time, they may still be going by some of those old rules of thumb and not necessarily recognizing, you know, how complicated it is now, right? And so I think that's where making sure when you are engaging with somebody to do this, that they are somebody that really fully understands the rules. They understand the changes that have happened over the last several years, and they are able to really do a fulsome review for you. But again, if you can do that ahead of time and make sure it makes sense to even walk into that room or get on that Zoom call with the accountant, which is going to cost you more money, then, you know, you're already ahead of the game, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, just like how many business owners understand QBI when mm -hmm. you mentioned it? Like not many. Like, I mean, it's just, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I was confused by the calculation when I first saw it too. I'm like, why well, this makes zero sense whatsoever. Yeah. Um, so, you know, things like that, it, it is good to have other tools behind you and, and it's really important. Yeah. Uh, CPAs, are trying to do their best a lot of times, but you know, new rules come into play all the time. And I think any, if you do go and try to do, you know, get this assessment done, make sure that your CPA is giving you a calculation sheet, yes. like make sure they have some kind of process. If they just are telling you, be like, that's great. Okay. Like, can I see the calculation? So I understand it, you mm -hmm. know, and just, I see how did they come to that decision for you? Most firms would have some kind of, if they're doing this for their clients, they're going to have some kind of template that they use to determine whether or not this is a good decision or a bad decision for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and I've talked to business owners too. I mean, I talked to a business owner not long ago that just started a business. I mean, literally, and they probably made $5,000 <laughs> the first year. It was a home design business. And she's asking me all these questions. And I'm like, well, what kind of entity are you? And she goes and looks it up. And they had already elected S-Corp treatment for them. And I'm like, <laughs> why? <laughs> so it, oh, it no. is, uh, I mean, they, and they said, well, they just said that would be easiest to go ahead and do it. And that is definitely don't do it just because, you know, you're filing things and might as well become an S-Corp right away. It mm -hmm. definitely makes sense to wait until it you know that it's going to make sense for you. Mm -hmm. And both you and I probably did that, right? Like I waited mm -hmm. and, and I waited long past kind of what those rules of thumb were mm -hmm. um, to actually elect S Corp because I was doing a detailed calculation and I could see that, hey, you know, based on a couple of factors about my specific financial situation, it doesn't make sense yet. And that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I definitely started out, I started out as a LLC tax mm -hmm. as a sole proprietor. And then I think it was two or three years in before I made the election to S Corp. And I still think that first year, I probably could have waited one more year. Yeah, um, I probably was pretty break even be between the mm -hmm. tax savings and then the additional compliance cost. Yep. So, yep. I think um, that's pretty common for mm -hmm. sure. So let's see, like, what are the upsides of being an S Corp. Yeah. So you do, I mean, again, if it's right for you and if you've gone through that calculation, you can save on self-employment taxes. So mm -hmm. essentially the way it works is that you kind of get to um, take your income, take your profit in your business and divide it into two buckets. So one of them, you're going to pay yourself out in salary. That's going to have all the taxes assessed on it, right? Income tax, self-employment tax. But then you also get to put kind of this second bucket 
of money of anything above and beyond this reasonable salary in your business. And that amount does not have self-employment taxes taken out, which is about 15.3%, mm -hmm. right? Now, again, it gets more complicated because of these other deductions and just the way to calculate that out. And so you want to make sure your accountant isn't doing that back of the envelope. Okay, you know, $50,000 in you know, owner's draws times 15.3%. Here's how much you're going to save. That doesn't mm -hmm. work anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but that's kind of the general idea of how an S corp can save you money is a bucket does not get taxed for self-employment, which is social security, Medicare. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, what are the other upsides? So they're kind of smaller, right? Like if you mm -hmm. plan to have, you know, we were talking about this just a minute ago, if you plan to have more owners in your business, S Corp might make sense, right? If you want to go for external funding, there can be a little bit of additional credibility to an S Corp. And sometimes it can be good because it allows you to pay yourself a paycheck from your business, which might help you when going for things like loans mm -hmm. um, or mortgages, right? To have, it's kind of silly because it's just a different way of paying yourself from your business. But for whatever reason, some mortgage agents really want to see W-2 pay stubs. Mm -hmm. So it can be helpful from that perspective as well. But I think one important thing to designate, because a lot of people think that an S-Corp is better legally. And I think that that's one piece of information that is kind of all over the place. And it's not true, right? You get your legal protection through your LLC. That is the legal entity that you're creating. That's your mm -hmm. limited liability company. Mm -hmm. So that's what gives you the legal protection. The S Corp is just an election. It's a tax form that you make to the IRS. It's mm -hmm. not, you're not really forming an S Corp, although sometimes we say that just because it's easier <laughs> than yeah. continuing to say elect to be taxed as an S Corp it gets a little bit long on your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> But it's important to know that's really what you're doing. You're filing a form with the IRS to elect to be taxed differently. And that's what can give you those potential tax savings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like as far as other opportunities that it opens up, I mean, really what we're looking at is potentially like additional members. But mm -hmm. um, that's why we don't see a lot of benefit if you're not getting that tax savings. Yeah. That's There's not a lot of benefit to going that direction. Yeah. Um, so a little bit about the downsides of going directly into S Corp. I mean, we already kind of touched on the fact that your tax filing will be more expensive. And part of the reason is that if you have just been doing a personal tax return with your um, CPA in the past, you know, you're going to have a 1040 and then you're going to have a Schedule C that's going to roll into your 1040. And that is like a personal tax return with a business schedule. Yeah, just one but extra schedule. Exactly. And now we've got two, when you, if you go and you elect S Corp, you've actually got an entity tax return, and then you still have your personal tax return. So those entity tax returns, even though it's kind of like all the same information put into a different tax form, mm -hmm. you will be charged more for it. Yes, um, really and there's great. other things to consider in that. So uh, that's one thing. Tell us like about potentially some other downsides of yeah. I mean, it's just going to be a little bit more costly in general. So you're going to put yourself on payroll, which can be, I think it depends on how you see it. It can be a, a good and a bad. Mm -hmm. If you are someone that kind of wants to be paying yourself regularly and you prefer, I know a lot of people like putting themselves on payroll because they're automatically going to be, um, you know, withholding taxes, which mm -hmm. means you may have you know, less or no estimated taxes, depending on your situation. I tend to over withhold so that I don't have to pay estimated taxes. So that's one strategy to not have to worry about that deadline. So some people like that, but it does mean usually paying for a payroll system, which isn't overly expensive, but just another thing to do, right? There's just a little bit more compliance, things like that to be aware of. Also, um, some of the things that maybe were a little easier when it came to being an LLC or a sole proprietor, like um, reimbursing yourself for things, right? Probably as an LLC or a sole proprietor, you have a cell phone, maybe you're using for work and you're writing off, you know, whatever percentage you've figured out is right, but let's say 50% for this scenario. Well, you could just take that as a tax deduction directly on your Schedule C. But there's a little bit more hoops to jump through when it comes to uh, doing that for an S Corp. You actually have to, well, you're supposed to set up a, an accountable plan, which is basically an employee reimbursement plan mm -hmm. where you're reimbursing yourselves for those specific expenses. So it's just there are a few extra steps sometimes that uh, because your entity is more separated from you as an S Corp, right? You're having your own kind of you know tax filing for that entity still pass through, but you just have to kind of do a few extra things uh, that you might not have had to do when it came to an LLC or sole proprietor. And then 
another thing is also like how healthcare is treated too. Mm -hmm. Um, you, uh, that rolls in. So people are like, yay, it's a business deduction to have my healthcare, which is, you know, true, but also the value of that healthcare ends up getting put on your W2 as wages essentially. Mm -hmm. So it increases your overall compensation package, um, when you have healthcare. So I know not everybody watching this video might be at a place where they're offering healthcare through their business, but it is, um, something to think about because it's, it's kind of like, well, you've got benefit on one side, that's a business deduction, but on the other side, it's like, you know, more income coming in. And another thing that people get really confused about is uh, reasonable compensation. So we're going to talk more about reasonable compensation, but I'm going to kind of leave it maybe a little bit to the end. I was hoping you could tell us a little bit about what is in your toolkit to kind of help people with some of these decision making uh, points, because um, I have purchased it and I just was looking through it and it has a lot of great different pieces, but I think it's better coming from you since you put it all together. And why did you bring in some of these uh, key pieces to help people make these decisions? Yeah. So it really came out of, again, because this is one of the most common questions that I get, right? And I wanted to allow business owners, again, before they had to go have a consult with an accountant, they want to be, I want people to be knowledgeable, right? So that you know, and we saw this, Hannah, during COVID, right? Mm -hmm. Where empowering yourself with maybe not all the details, but enough that you know you can kind of sense check the information that you're getting is so Mm -hmm. critical, Mm -hmm. right? So I wanted to empower business owners to understand more fully, okay, where are the tax savings coming from? How does this entity work? What are the things I need to make sure that I'm doing, right? Um, Before they walk into those conversations with an accountant. And also to kind of do some of that preliminary work around you know, okay, is this right for me? Let me sit down and do this calculation and plug in my information the way I need to. And I walk you through how to do that calculation. And we use a calculator um, to do that calculation within within the S Corp toolbox. And then also there are things around, you know, your checklist of here's how to make sure you're being compliant and what you need to know. And we have Mm -hmm. information on setting yourself up on payroll, right? Mm -hmm. So that you don't have to pay an accountant to do all of that. We have information on how to elect it yourself because it's really not that hard so that you don't have to pay for that yourself. So we kind of give you some uh, also savings opportunities there Mm -hmm. where you don't have to pay a whole bunch of fees to get this thing off the ground. Again, I do think it is good to, you know, be working with an accountant as you go forward, and especially when you get to tax filings and things like that. But there's a lot you can do on your own. And and that information Mm -hmm. can be so empowering to have it yourself. So I wanted to Again, give people an ability to have an independent assessment. I don't have a dog in this fight because I don't, you know, do any S Corp services. I'm not selling any services. <laughs> I won't do your tax filing even if you ask me. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't have that reason to tell you one way or another. Mm-hmm. And so I think that there is some benefit there when you're getting information. You want to think about, well, what's what's the potential bias that could be behind there? And I wanted to take that out completely. Um, so that's, I think, the benefit of the things that are in the S Corp toolbox. It's everything you need to know to make the decision to become an S Corp, or even we've had people who already are S Corps buy it because they don't feel like they have the information that they need. And they felt like they got set up and they're like, I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't know if I'm doing this right. I don't know how to set my reasonable compensation. Again, that's something else that's in there too. It's some information on how to determine that. Mm -hmm. So it's really, that's really what it's for. It's to empower Mm -hmm. the end business owner to be able to make those decisions and to be, you know, just informed, you know? Which is great. I mean, and you actually have like a link to a accountable plan Mm -hmm. uh, kind of document. So you can sort of make sure that you have these things in place um, that, you know, if you were to get audited and you needed to produce something like that from to you for the IRS, you're like, oh, actually, I actually have that form. (laughs) It's like Mm -hmm. articles incorporation or something like how many people can put their hands on their articles of incorporation, like hopefully a lot, but it's kind of ends up being one of those things that I remember even during like PPP time, some banks were asking for some documentation that business owners didn't have. Yeah. Um, So, you know, I think it's great that you provided those as well. Um, And, you know, it's one of those things you don't need until you do. Yeah. And so we're like, (laughs) and, and (laughs) during COVID, like everybody needed all this stuff and we were like, Oh, but you're supposed to be doing this the whole time. But you know, again, yeah. You didn't need it until you until you did. And that's the same thing with kind of documentation of reasonable salary, right? That's mm-hmm. another one of those things that you don't need until you do. <laughs> right. And also like the um, I like that you give people enough information that they could fill out the um, is it the 2553 form mm-hmm. um, to uh, elect to be an S Corp? <clears throat> yep. I have not memorized all the forms, but that's one that I know. <laughs> 
Uh, that's actually one a client just recently elected and the CPA was like, okay, the charge is $250. Is that okay? And then she was just like, fine, you know, that's, you know, whatever, just get it done. You know, it's their CPA that they have for their, you know, business. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to step into that, but I'm like, you know, this is something we could do ourselves, but if you just want to not have it on your plate, that's fine. But you know, $250 for filling out basically a one page form. Um, and what's funny about that is I was going to have a service cause I had done a service for my LLC and I was going to use the same service to do that just cause it was easier. Right. And you have to, you have to actually send it in, which I, I mean, like the IRS, come on, like this is one of those forms that right. you can't e-file and it's just the silliest thing in the entire world. <laughs> you have, I oh, literally, yeah. And so I tried to do it through the service just to make it easier because I didn't have any stamps <laughs> and they were going to charge me and then they filled it out wrong. And I, I was like, that's not even correct when I was reviewing it. <laughs> so I'm like, well, I'm just, so I just printed it out. I went to the post office. I got some stamps. I sent this thing out but it was free to do right myself. Yeah. So yeah, there's, there are certain things like that. It's kind of like the businesses that charge you for, for, uh, getting an EIN number. Don't ever do that. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> if you have no shame, no shame, yeah. but like it takes, you can do that online. You what? can do that part online too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can do that part online that thankfully you don't have to send a letter for that one. <laughs> right. Oh my goodness. Yeah. The IRS needs to like get with the times. Okay. Well, let's, let's touch briefly on reasonable compensation mm -hmm. and then uh, we will wrap up here. But I think this is probably one of the most important parts about talking about, uh, you know, becoming an S corporation. And one of the things that we saw during the PPP loans and everything is we were having S corporation owners uh, not paying themselves a W-2 wage and then wanting and coming and get like they wanted to have, uh, you know, PPP money for their salary, uh, but they were not paying themselves a W-2 wage salary because the uh, they were like, well, if you're not pay playing by the rules, you're not going to get the benefits of, mm -hmm. you know, the PPP. Now, all that is way behind us. We get that. But reasonable compensation high level is that the IRS, if they're going to give you this benefit of having the savings on the profit, they want you to make sure you're paying yourself as an owner something that's determined a reasonable compensation. And that term alone can go lots of different directions. <laughs> <laughs> so there is actually ways that we can have uh, that we can actually determine what reasonable is. So can yeah. you tell us a little bit about some of those methods that we can use? Yeah. I mean, there are a few different methods that you can use and a lot of accountants, and this is again, one of those areas where there is misinformation and maybe it's not misinformation, but a lot of accountants will use like a rule of thumb and they'll say, okay, divide your total profit 50, 50, take 50% out as compensation and 50% out as, you know, owner draw or 60, 40, you know, there are a couple different like rules of thumb, none of which are actually supported by the IRS. So they're useful, like maybe just when you're kind of estimating it out or thinking about it. But if you're actually going to be setting your reasonable comp, I think the best method, again, especially if you're a business owner that's wearing many hats in your business, is to go through this kind of many hats approach, right? Mm -hmm. Which is cons considered the cost approach, but basically it's figuring out, okay, you know, what are the various different roles that I do in my business? And, you know, you gathering the wage data related to those roles and figuring out even your proficiency in those roles. What would you pay someone else to do that and mm -hmm. kind of averaging it out? So you kind of say, all right, I, you know, 10 percent of my time is spent doing this 12 uh, percent of my time. And you kind of have to estimate it out. But ultimately going through and figuring out what all those different roles are. And then averaging that out to, okay, here's what my salary is for working in my business. Because that's really what you're paying yourself for is the work that you're doing within your business. Your owner's draws are kind of more like the money you make for being an investor and an owner in your business. Mm -hmm. But your reasonable comp is for working in your business. So really going back to kind of the issue with COVID, the only real reason if you're an S Corp to not pay yourself a reasonable salary, right? If you're taking owner's draws is if you're not working in your business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's very mm -hmm. unlikely for a lot of small business owners, right? So if you're investing in different businesses as an S Corp owner, different story. But if you are actively working in your business, you need to be paying yourself a reasonable salary, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that that's really where the difficulty comes in, what the IRS is going to want to see right? When they, when they come in, they're not going to want to see like a rule of thumb. They're not going to want to see anything. They want to see how did you come up with this based on what you would have to pay somebody else to do those jobs. And they're probably going to come at it from the standpoint of, you know, they're going to pick 
one or two job duties that you have that are your higher level job duties, they're going to come up with a reasonable compensation based on that. But if you can come back and be like, actually, I spend, you know, 20% of my time on admin stuff. And that's, you know, I would have to pay someone cheaper to do that. And you've kind of mm -hmm. averaged it out. You can usually get that number down, which again mm -hmm. is good mm -hmm. from the standpoint of you're going to pay less in taxes, the lower your justifiable reasonable salary is, right? Mm -hmm. The IRS can come back and reclassify those wages if they don't agree. So the best thing that you can have is kind of that ironclad proof to say like, here's the research, <laughs> here are the numbers, mm -hmm. here's the average salaries, here's the wage data, here's how we came up with this, right? Yeah. And we could probably do a whole video just on oh, yeah. reasonable compensation. But I think, you know, it's important that you don't are like, I mean, even if you are the CEO of your business and it's, you know, small business, if you just typed in, you know, what does a CEO make? You're going to see numbers that are like $250,000 yeah. on the minimum, on the very minimum side. And so that mini hats approach lets you say, oh, well, maybe I'm a graphic designer and that's my business. Well, I spend 50% of my time doing graphic design. What does a graphic designer get paid? And what's the average there? And then I do 20% of my, my work is sales. And then, you know, 15% of my work is social media marketing. Mm -hmm. And then 10% is admin. And you can start to build like, what does a total salary look like? And, and some of um, it may even be things like janitorial. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Remember, we do a lot yeah. of stuff around here. <laughs> we do, we do. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a really broad range. So that's why how you could get, you know, maybe even if you are like, the CEO of your business, um, you don't necessarily have to go and find out like, what is a CEO getting mm -hmm. paid right now? Right. Um, that might not be supportable. But what you might find in that process is maybe if you have a $50,000 profit, you might find that you need to be paying yourself reasonable salary, even taking into the mini hats approach, a $60,000 you know, salary. And then that kind of gives you that realization of this doesn't make sense for me mm -hmm. to potentially move to the S corporation. Exactly. Um, so I, you know, I think that it's a super helpful tool to determine is this the right place or not the right place. So yeah, and that's mm -hmm. one of the things. Um, so with reasonable compensation, because not a lot of people want to be spending their time going in doing all this research, you know, it, it's, <laughs> we may not even have access to the data that we need for that. Mm -hmm. um, part of the S Corp toolbox, <clears throat> if you buy there's an S Corp toolbox plus that also comes with a reasonable compensation study. And I actually mm -hmm. review each and every one of them too, to make sure they're correct, but it'll give you all the charts and the graphs and it will come up, it pulls in all the wage data. So you just have to kind of fill in some information about the things that you do and it will spit out a like IRS defensible report for you that will be you know so valuable if and when you're ever audited or even just to have the peace of mind that your reasonable compensation is appropriate right yeah and the company that does those is great I've used them before and um, yep, yep. you know you I mean the price that you have on it is extremely reasonable <laughs> um, yours if, if I was your CFO I would be like maybe you could charge more for that <laughs> um, but you can make all your own decisions on that side. Um, but overall, I mean, I, yeah, I love, like, I think they've had what, like a hundred percent um, rate. If you have one of those reports in hand and you're paying yourself, whatever your report says, um, the IRS is not mm. questioning it because you've yeah. done your due diligence. And they may question it, but then you hand it to them and then yeah. they're like, okay, they've won a hundred percent of times when it has been challenged or when they've been under audit. Mm -hmm. um, so they were really good uh, track record. So that's the part, that's the company RC reports that we've partnered with as well. That's kind of the yeah. premier one on reasonable compensation. Yeah. So it's kind of like a little insurance policy mm -hmm. is really what it is. <laughs> so. Exactly. Okay. Well, I, you know, we're coming up on kind of the time that we wanted to a lot today, but I know we could keep talking about this for a long time. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll have another reasonable compensation discussion. And mm -hmm. you've also got some videos over on your channel yep. about some deeper dives into some of these and even showing the calculation. Mm -hmm. I watched a video uh, where you went through some scenarios where it didn't make sense to maybe go into an S corp at the time that you know, using the old rules of thumb, you know, mm -hmm. you might have gone that direction. So yep. um, we'll make sure to link those in the description box. And thank you, everybody for being here. And thank you, Jamie, so much for your time. Thanks, Hannah, for having me. I'll see you next time. Okay. <laughs> Bye.